the recording and then we can continue. So welcome back everyone also when you're watching it on Moodle. All right, so types of data, you have logicals, which can be true or false. You have numerics, which are any number. You can have characters, which are single characters or words or letters or sentences. Um, so hey, you can have as many characters within the brackets as you want. We have vectors, which can be numeric, character or logical. And we have matrices, um, which can be created using the matrix keyword. And then you have to fill in the numbers that you want to have in a matrix, the number of rows and the number of columns. There are some more advanced types in R. So a data frame is a matrix, um, but here, because the vector and the matrix can only be of a single type. So a vector can be either numeric, character, or logical. A matrix can also only be numeric, character, or logical. If I want to define a matrix in the sense of a matrix that you have in um, Excel, for example, right, then in, a, in an Excel table, the first column can contain numbers and the second column can, for example, contain letters like F for female or M for male um, or other types like true and false. So a data frame is a matrix, um, kind of, but it's not because it can contain multiple basic types. So each column in a data frame can be of a different type. A list is even more complex. A list is very similar to a vector. It's a, it's a, it's things behind each other. Um, but now every element of the list can contain anything. So I can make a list which has, as which at the first position has a character. At the second position, I put in v1. So those are that's a vector. And at the third position, it has a number. So I can combine, I can even put a matrix in there if I wanted to. I could say I have a list, the first element of the list is Fred, the second element of the list is a matrix, and the third element of the list is a single numerical value. And because R is based on statistics, um, it also has factorials. So factorials are categorical variables which have um, a certain amount of, of levels. So, for example, something like gender, um, normally when you do statistics, then the gender is a categorical variable because you have males and you have females. Um, tell us, K, thank you for following. So the, the gender is a, the factor is a, is a different, is a different type. Um, so that R understands that in statistics, it has to treat a factor differently uh, than, for example, a numerical value or a character value. And of course, in R you have comments, um, and use me often, always use comments to describe what you are doing when you're writing a script. Um, and comments start with a hashtag, and then everything after the hashtag will be ignored, um, but this is your free space to write. And you see that I use, even here, I use comments to kind of write down, so that still I can copy paste this into R, and it will still work because hey, here the numeric vector is just ignored by R, so it will still create a vector A with the numbers in there, um, and the comments are what it does. All right, so those are more or less, that's more or less the whole type system of R. So you have logicals, numericals, characters, a vector is something which is of a basic type, so either numeric, character, or logical. A matrix is the same, so every element in the matrix is numeric, character, or logical. If I want to have a matrix which is more similar to a matrix in Excel, then I can make a data frame, so now every column can have a different type. If I want to just store a list of different things, I can use the list keyword and then I can put in anything that I want. So I could put in, I could make a list where the first element is a matrix or a single character. I can then have the second element of the list be a vector and so on. I can have a factor, um, which then is a special type, which is used in statistics, which is a categorical variable. All right, so a lot of terms, a lot of difficult things. And to check, um, we have a quick self-test for you guys. Good. So 
we will j just throw in chat what you think it is. Um, so what is the type of this thing? And I'm just going to wait and not continue. Okay, so first guess is from Tokoforol, logical. Alexander says character. Any more guesses? There are no wrong, an well, there are wrong answers, but like participation is key. Like, okay, Mata Klaus, yes, Toko, logical. All right, so this is a character. Characters you can figure out because they have these quotes so this is although it has this is a character which has the, the the true written in there but it is not a logical yeah mean yeah of course well like <laughs> if it would be like that's why the type system in R is the screwing you over every time that it's it's just it the, it's the minutia that count it's just like an experiment right um, if you do an experiment and you take chemical which has the quotes around it then you're not taking the chemical that you want all right so second one what is this character 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 yeah the same yeah sure sure like like you're not gonna fall for the same trick twice right so this is indeed a character which has the value one in there. Fool me once, <laughs> yeah, that's true, that's true. There will be something like this on the exam. <laughs> Definitely there will be, and I will do my best to trick you guys. So and be very, very mindful when I ask these types of questions. All right, third one, 1e plus 11. Numerical, numeric, numeric. Numeric, numeric. Very good. This is indeed a numeric value, just written in scientific notation. R understands scientific notation. All right, number four. Same. Numeric, same, numeric. You guys are hard to trick. This is indeed a numerical value. So bonus points for anyone who knows which number this is. And you have to be quick because otherwise I assume that you Google this. Zero, zero. No, no, this is the number 137. It's written in hexadecimal format, which is zero X means that it's in hex. So um, it is eight times 16 plus nine. Um, I think so. Let me let me check that. <laughs> eight times sixteen and one hundred twenty-nine plus nine. So it's eight times sixteen plus plus nine. So one hundred and thirty-seven. All right, next one. What is the type of? Oh, you can't see my mouse. What is the type of this? Command, command, command. Very good, very good. A lot of people think that this is a color. And it isn't. Yeah, it's a comment because of the hashtag. The funny thing is, if you put the quotes around it, right? So if you if you do um, double quote this thing, double quote, then it's actually a color. The R type system is complex. It's 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 like this. It is not a color. If I put the quotes around it, then R automatically recognizes it as being a color. Um, but this is a color notation. So if you're used to doing HTML and stuff, then this is how a color looks like. But then R typing it in like this will just ignore it because it is a comment. All right, next one. Logical, 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 logical. Yes, this is a logical. Very good, very good, very good. Next one. What is this? All right, Mario says factor, Alexander says function, question mark, factor. Yes, it is a factor, yes because it takes the value true and then forces it to be a factor. As always, 
forces something to be of that type. So as factor will always return a, 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 a factor value. All right, last one, people. Silence. I should have like a sound effect of like a cricket. All right, so we get numeric, true, logical, no clue, is false, character, checking if it is a character, false, false, logical. Logical, indeed. Is this a character? Will return false. But the type of false is logical. So I take a number, then I ask a question. The question can be true or false, in this case false. The, the type of false is logical. Are of course, yeah, 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 yeah. Can become very complex and very sneaky as well. So just remember the type system in R is difficult. I still struggle with it. Even after programming in R for 15 years, I sometimes get surprised by how R interprets certain factors or in automatically cast one from the other. Um, but I think you guys have a pretty good understanding of which types are there now so one more thing um, about indexing I told you indexing you do by square brackets unless you have a list so the list is a special type because it can contain anything so you index a list by using the double square bracket so square bracket square bracket the element that you want square bracket square bracket so if I make a list which contains on the first element, something called Fred, which I name Fred, then I have some, I have a, f a character vector, uh, a logic, I have a numerical vector, which I call numbers, then I have a single numeric called age, and then I put on the first, fourth position, I just put in a matrix. And then I say this matrix has two rows, two columns. Um, then the vector, if I, if I would type in R, W, then it would show me that these are the things that are there. If I want to select the first element of W, then I have to say from W, give me the first element and then give me the first element again. Because it assumes that since it is a, a, a list that it can contain anything. And if I want to select Fred, I have to say from, the from W, give me the first element, which is called name Fred. And if I only want to have Fred, um, I, I, I have to put in this double one. It is, of course, a lot better to just use the name. So I can use the dollar sign to also select from a list. So I can say W, so from the list, W, take the thing which is called numbers, and then from numbers, take the second and the third element. So this will return two, three. I can also, from W, select the fourth element, and then select the first column of this element that got returned and this will give you the first column of the matrix so it will tell you one zero it's better again to use the dollar sign because it's much more clear what you're doing so from w from the thing which is called matrix give me one comma which is the first row of the matrix so double square brackets you use with lists and it's just the way that it is, and I don't like it, no one likes it, but um, it's just because of the fact that a list can contain anything, um, so you have to be explicit in what element from the list you want to select. So double square brackets only use with lists. All right, so matrices and data frames are slightly different because they don't have a length, they have a n row and an n call so the n row function tells you how many rows a matrix has the n call function tells you how many columns a matrix has if you want to get the na the row names of a matrix you say row names of the matrix variable or of a variable called matrix you can also get the column names you can also set the column names and the row names so if i would have a matrix which is a three by three matrix i could set the row names to be a b and c and I can also use the column name, or I can also set the column names of the matrix to be A, B, and C. So the function row names allows you to pass the require or the, the row names in that you want. Um, 
when we talk about matrices and data frames, also the T function occurs, it occurs a lot, and T stand for, stands for transpose of the matrix, and the transpose of the matrix is just taking the rows of the, or the columns of the matrix and making those the rows. So hey, it just takes the matrix, and then the transpose of the matrix is just hey, row one is column one, row two is column two, and row three, uh, row three is column three. So it, it kind of puts the matrix on its side. Um, and transposing happens a lot. I don't know why, but data is always in the wrong format. Um, for example, the correlation function calculates correlation between the columns. And often you want to calculate the correlation between the rows. So you transpose the matrix first and then throw it into the correlation function. All right, a little bit about variables. We've already seen variables a lot. Variables are, are like boxes and you can put things in. Um, you can use this arrow, so the greater than minus symbol, or you can just use the is, um, single is for putting or for defining a variable and putting something in. The nice thing about variables is in my mind, they are boxes and you can, you can use this box without knowing what's in there. And we've already seen a lot of variables being defined, so I can say variables and assign to this word the, n the number 1.5. I can define a variable which is called can, and then I can put a vector in there. And so the variables can have many names, and the names that you choose for your variables should be meaningful. Um, so if I put, for example, um, body weight in there, then I will name my variable body weight. Or I will, if I have, for example, length of a tail, then I would call the variable tail links. So, all right, so we're almost through. So, coding clean means clean scripts. So, the way that I want you guys to do the assignments is um, use a new directory for each new lecture. So, when you have your computer, go to your C drive or your D drive, create a folder called R lecture or um, R course. And then within the R course, you make a new directory called assignment one. And within that, you put the script and you put the data that you are going to use during this assignment. And this is to things to, to, to kind of separate out these things and just to work clean so you want to have a structure like if you're doing an experiment you're also putting your chemicals at different positions and so you put all of the things which are highly toxic at a certain place and the things which you can like tip over and spill you put them in another place and the same thing holds for for uh, for coding coding is like working in a lab in a way and so um, what I always do is uh, name your files in a logical way use a directory for things which belong together. So if you're doing assignment one or assignment two or assignment three, you don't put all of these in the same folder. No, you put them in a separate directory on your hard drive. Besides that, add a header, a comment section to each file. Put in the comment section your name, the date at which you did something, the purpose of the file, and add a copyright statement saying that this is copyrighted by me or it's copyrighted by me but I'm working for the Humboldt University um, and use a lot of comments when you create a script and the header is there that in case in the future anyone steals your data or uh, steals your analysis script um, you can prove that you wrote it so the header is is something that will allow you to kind of claim ownership of the file um, or claim ownership of the code. Um, it's even better if you put it under version control, um, but just adding a simple header expresses who you are, when you did something and why or what the purpose is of what is in this file. And add a copyright statement just to be sure because people might steal your code and it does happen. So this is more or less how my scripts generally look like. So if I have, so if I start by, so my script starts here by moving to a certain folder on my hard drive, um, but it contains the purpose. So this is the analysis of the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. It is copyrighted in 2015 by the HU Berlin. Because I work for the HU, things that I write are copyrighted HU. It is written by me 
It was last modified in 2015 April and it was first written February 2015. And this, this is just so that you can remember what you did and if in 10 years you go back to the R course and hey, you have all of the, all of the PowerPoints and all of the assignments, you have those ne neatly packed in a certain directory and then you have your own answers to the assignments in each of the assignment folders that you do. It seems like a lot of work at first and it is, it's a lot of like additional um, Aufwand that you do, um, but it will help you in the long run to structure things properly. Um, and it's, it's just, it's all about being diligent. Use a good text editor. We already talked about this in the beginning. So for Windows, I always advise Notepad++ for Mac OS X uh, text wrangler, nowadays called BB edit. Um, for Linux, use what you want. If you can use Linux and you installed it yourself, then you're perfectly capable of deciding which text editor you want to lose. Um, a lot of people like Kate or gedit or something like that under Linux, but under Linux, like if you're capable to install Linux, then that's perfectly fine and then you can use whatever you want. Most importantly, if you want to have a good text editor, have one that supports code highlighting and support for bracket testing. Like I showed you in Notepad++, right? If I am doing something and I'm selecting a bracket, then it highlights the bracket which belongs there. And in this case, everything which is a comment is col colored green. Everything which is a known keyword in R is colored in like purplish. And logical values are in blue and strings are in gray. So that directly separates out all of the code and makes it clear uh, what we are looking at. Um, so Remember, clean code is smart code. You can write stuff like this. The computer doesn't care, but you will. When you look at your own script in 10 years, you will hit yourself in the head for writing it like this. Um, and so make sure that you have a certain structure. And this is just HTML, um, but yeah clean code if it looks good it's it's more it's 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 more correct or not so much more correct but it can be just as correct but it just looks better and it's easier to maintain and and um, yeah my R code for my study project is confusing mess I, yeah that's what I mean like um, when I started out my supervisor told me to wear a rubber band and every time that he would look at my code and he would say, this is not correct, then I, he would flip me with the rubber band. You are a professional. Working in a lab means being a professional. Coding, being a bioinformatician, or learning how to code and doing stuff also means that you're a professional. So you should take pride in your work and things should look good, right? If you're a carpenter, a chair, which is looks like a mess is still a chair and can still be functional but it's not something that you can be proud of so make sure that when you write code that in the end when you look back on it you are proud of it and that it looks good and that hey, if it looks good it's generally also well written questions think this is the end no so questions so far Anything that you say, I didn't really understand that. I kind of want to have a uh, assignment or an example for it or something like that. General questions like AMAs, like what's your favorite color of Vialpacas? All right, so how R interpret things and what it knows depends on how it has been written in the first place, right? Yes, yes, it, 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 it goes from top to bottom. It just executes instruction, 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 instruction. And of course you can loop, you can go back and, and loop, um, but the, the way things are written um, is, is, is just as important as um, how it looks. Um, I can show you some examples of stuff that I did in the past, um, just to give you an, uh, an idea. Um, so let me 
get you a piece of code which I am proud of and then show you another piece of code where I think oh my god what the hell did I do here um, so let's just um, move you guys to uh, notepad++ um, so the nice thing about notepad++ is that you can also have like this thing on the side so that you can kind of browse your directory um, so one thing that I'm really proud of is my own web server that I wrote. It's not written in R, but that doesn't really matter. Um, it's written in D, um, but it it's also available online. Um, but it it's written like this, right? So you have nicely a module statement, then you have all of your imports, and then you have things. But you can already see that there could be more comments here. Um, but then the, the code itself, it is nicely identified. So every time that I use an if statement, I give it a little bit of extra space so I can see what is within the if statement. And because of code highlighting, you can see that. Um, and this looks kind of okay. It's not perfect. It's not as good as I want it. And one of the things that is missing is that there's no header in this file, um, but in this case that is not required um, because here I have a license, so the license here is in a separate file so that the, the thing can track it. Um, if I would look at something on which I'm less proud, um, then I could probably take any file which I did for the Mega Muga analysis um, and then something like this. It does have a header, which is still quite okay. Um, well, this actually looks pretty good as well, right? So it's it's nicely structured. It doesn't look too messy. Um, there's probably some stuff which is more messy. Um, well, this is just an empty file. So and here we have a file which also looks kind of structured. Um, but if I go back to older code um, that I wrote when I was much, much younger, um, then let me see if I can find a good example. I already have RStudio installed. Is it possible to use R without RStudio or do I have to install? Um, you can just install R. So um, you don't have to deinstall RStudio. Um, that, that's not necessary. Um, I don't have our studio installed, but um, if you, I yeah, you can install both side by side. Not not only that, but um, I don't have that on my window capture currently. Um, let me open up a new command prompt and then add a new input capture. I want to capture not the display. I want to capture a window. All right, and then something like this. So normally when I do R, it looks kind of like this. So I just start R from the thing, and this is also R. And if you have R Studio installed, then just going and doing, opening up a command line and typing R will also give you R. And here I can do the same thing. So I can say x equals 5. I can then print x. I can do 78 divided by 5. And so it, it still works the same. In the end, it's it, it's just how, how it looks. All right, let me see. All right, so this you can ignore. Get them from Moodle. I don't put them online anymore. So I'm not putting them on my own website. You can look at my own website. Um, my girlfriend and moderator put a lot of work in making it look good. I had a website which had, which the design was relatively old, but start of last week I updated it to a new design. So if you want to see that, then just go to www.dennyadams.nl um, and the, the assignments and the lectures are not there. So you have to get them from Moodle. And that was it for today, which is pretty good. I thought that we would run out of time, but we still have like 10 more minutes if you guys want to talk about other stuff. Um, just a little bit about Twitch, right? So for all the people that subscribe to me, when you are subscribed and watching the lectures, you earn something which is called channel points. And these things you can use to do interesting stuff um, like um, highlight your message um, or get an emote. 
so I think something like this you can highlight so in theory you could hey, if there's a lot of people talking to each other you can use your channel points to highlight a message um, no one used it today there is two special things that you can buy with a lot of channel points and I put them in to just make the lecture a little bit more fun for you guys um, and that is next slide in Dutch and next slide in German so officially I, I'm I've, I'm Dutch so I can sp speak Dutch um, and I can also speak German a little bit there is no next slide <laughs> we're on the next slide but if you redeem your um, next slide in German then I get a message on my twitch that says that I have to do the next slide in German so that would be uh, for example this slide so then I would go und hier findet man den Aufgaben den Aufgaben kann man downloaden von meinen eigenen Webseite welche man finden kann unter www.dennyadens.nl slash assignments uh, aber man muss nicht den slash an das Ende von den URL vergessen aber dieses ist alles alt weil dieses ist ein altes Slide so man kann es oder man muss es jetzt downloaden von Moodle so in case you just want to have me struggle with German or you just want to hear me speak in my own voice in my own language um, then you can redeem this thing I put it in just to make it more fun for you guys so just that you can hear me struggle with German and make the lecture a little bit more interactive um, besides that, on top of me, you also see the Twitch thing, which actually shows how long I've been streaming for, how many people are viewing, you see the mood box, and you can use words in the mood box. So the mood box, um, let me see where that is. Nice German. <laughs> yeah, well, try it on a slide which is complex, and you will see that I start struggling much, much more. Um, but I do, like, I've been living in Germany now for six years, so my, my German is okay ish. That's why I put it in. Like, I didn't put in uh, next slide in Spanish because my Spanish is just like very, very minimal. Seven exclamation mark. It's seven out of ten or seven years oh yeah seven years in Germany yeah I forget how old I am but uh, so but uh, you can also put stuff in the mood box um, no problem I'm Spanish teacher I know I know that's why I said Spanish that yeah, but it's it's gonna be like I'm not gonna get further than hola and hasta la vista and vamos a la playa and these kinds of things in Spanish um, but uh, yeah but you can see me struggling in German if you want or you can listen to me listen have one slide in Dutch um, which just means that we have to do the slide two times because I'm gonna do it in English anyway um, but I will do the slide in German or in Dutch if someone wants to get rid of their channel points um, the mood box upstairs um, which you can see so you can you can fill in um, keywords which will show your current emotion so you can say things like sleep and then it will show a little bed and you can do things like zombie to change your thing so if you if you type it um, in, uh, in in capital letters then my robot that I wrote which monitors my twitch channel will pick that up and uh, will allow you to, uh, to to show your emotion like my moderator and girlfriend had hard eyes the same for Skrita very cool lecture format very refreshing thanks um, I, I I like doing it like um, I was very very unhappy by not being able to do the uh, um, by doing the in-person lectures because of the pandemic um, and I I, I I do like this much more like I've seen people that just pre-record their lectures and then just put them on Moodle and have like a 30 minute Zoom talk. Um, I, I like the interaction. I like being able to have people directly ask me questions and having to respond to that. Um, and hey, it, it's, 
it could be better like I could have like a professional microphone and these but the, like in the end I think it's cool um, so for the mood box if anyone wants to use it let me see where the commands are twitch overlay and then it's the uh, engine um, so let me show you oh it's thank you thank you so much like um, yeah well I, I it's it's my day job teaching people how to program and how to do bioinformatics um, so this is the bot that I wrote so all of the commands that it supports are things like grinning grin smiling joy open smiling halo winks and these kinds of things um, quote I'm really looking forward for the rest of the lecture thanks thanks I, I, I like doing it like this like it's good to have like the uh, the interactivity and, and now you can directly ask for a, for an example if you want one um, so uh, we'll see how this works out in the in the long run um, but I do like it but I think that it would be good to have like a, a zoom meeting um, and um, I think we had a new record of viewers yeah I think so as well I think so as well like this is gonna work really nicely one of the things that I'm uh, <laughs> one of the things that I'm uh, a little bit which I don't like is the fact that there's commercials but of course like it's twitch so they have to make money as well um, so they can they can show you like 10 seconds or 30 seconds uh, you, you need to remove the, the quotes surrounding it um, this is just because it's it's programming so I have to program it in but if you would do halo like this then it should work um, so and of course when you subscribe it so it's it's just a, a little bit of a of an interesting uh, thing good <laughs> yeah and there's a lot more right like so I'm and if you have anything that you want to add and you think like oh this is an emotion that I often have and there's a kind of emoticon for it just let me know and I can I can put it on <laughs> yeah the Peter Arons is for uh, for for Daniel uh, it's one of the students from the previous course who I used to game with um, and uh, so we, we put that in so he also has his own so he also has the Daniel one um, which will be like a little boy emoticon so that that's about it for today and uh, so if you want to know anything more or um, just have some general commands um, let me actually directly upload the assignments for you guys and the um, powerpoints um, so that I do not forget so let me go to Moodle uh, data analysis and then turn editing on all right no I don't want to drag and drop files um, and I just want to add a new section no um, I want to add a label where's that label 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 there's the label so lecture one introduction all right save and return to course is the cue from Star Trek uh, I think I did that because of the question mark it's just uh, like raising your hand bye bye see you next week um, soil Rob and Linda Russo I see all right so lecture one introduction and I will add the lecture and the other